Hey there, Hulkamaniacs! It's the Anthonics Maximus Reviews season premiere. And what a better way to kick off a new season by wearing something green in relation to this movie. Why, this isn't Marvo at all! Push honeycomb cereal big and part of balanced breakfast. Hulk, go! Don't forget your honeycomb! Honeycomb big! And he's got a big bite! Hi, I'm Anthonix Maximus, bitching to you about movies because if you don't subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna get angry. And you wouldn't like me when I get angry. Mostly because I begin to get pissy and I start to cry. Now that She-Hulk is out on Disney+, Plus, why not review something that ties into this show? I mean, yeah, I guess I could review the early 2000s Hulk movie, or I can review the 2008 Incredible Hulk movie, but nah. I am going to continue the adventures of David Banner. That's right, I am going to review Bill Bixby's The Incredible Hulk, Trial of the Incredible Incredible Hulk. Seriously, David Banner, you keep avoiding taxes, they're gonna catch up to you. And why not go with a trial of the Incredible Hulk? She-Hulk can have both the Incredible Hulk and Daredevil making his debut in the MCU, aside from Spider-Man No Way Home. We can discuss the movie where Hulk teamed up with Daredevil. It's even shown in my display. But of course, the MCU Daredevil has the yellow and red outfit, not the armored Daredevil outfit that's featured in my display because I don't want to pay a lot of money to a scalper so I can own a red outfit Daredevil. What was I talking about? Oh yes, Hasbro, what the hell? No way. Uh, right, the uh, Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Now, previously I've reviewed The Incredible Hulk Returns, which featured Thor. Back when I first moved into this home and I had very little. And this was before I figured out there is a such thing as higher than 360p quality. And you know what's great? Because I already discussed the production of The Incredible Hulk series in that video, I don't have to do it here. So instead of wasting our time discussing useless trivia about The Incredible Hulk production, I can waste our time with useless trivia of The Incredible Hulk and the comics. Basically, that means I can discuss the origin of The Incredible Hulk and the production of this film. I mean, why shouldn't we celebrate The Incredible Hulk? He's a guy that turns green and throws a bitch fit. Who wouldn't want to aspire to be that? Now, the first issue of The Incredible Hulk debuted in May of 1962. Of course, it was a Stan Lee and Jack Kirby project. Why wouldn't it be? It was treated as a simple monster story. Bruce Banner is a gamma radiation scientist. He was doing experiments out in the field, and all of a sudden, this little bastard, Rick Jones, decides to drive into it and just hang out. So Bruce Banner tries to go out and save him, but the gamma radiation explosion happened, and he got caught. Bruce did. And that's how he became the Incredible Edible Hulk. The Incredible Edible Hulk. Now, in the first issue, he comes out gray. Common myth is that that's just how it was printed. Really, Stan Lee wanted to make the Incredible Hulk gray because he didn't want to have any kind of misunderstanding with racial implications. Keep in mind, this was 1962, so we're right in the middle of the Civil Rights era, so we had to kind of be careful about things and, you know, just wanted to make sure that no one's the bad guy, just it's your typical monster comic. The monster isn't really the bad guy either. It's just a whole misunderstanding with General Thunderbolt Ross. The thing is, though, with more and more issues of the comics being printed, the gray was inconsistent. And in some cases, the gray kind of came out green. So eventually, we just kind of rolled with a green Hulk. Like how fast I went through that? As I mentioned in The Incredible Hulk Returns, the TV series does take a lot of liberties because... 
they didn't really want a superhero show per se. They wanted to treat it with more of a serious dramatic tone. They didn't do a gamma radiation explosion, but rather a result of a lab accident because David Banner, not Bruce Banner, David Bruce Banner, Bruce being his middle name, tried to do an experiment on himself and it went wrong and his inner anger would come out every time he got angry. And the show pretty much puts him always on the run. So that way no one gets hurt. But yeah, as time went on, the comic books just kind of evolved giving the Incredible Hulk. Years later, they would kind of dig deep into why the Incredible Hulk is the way he is. Why for anyone else who would get hit with gamma radiation, they would mutate differently or they would just die. In Bruce Banner's case, according to the comics, he had an abusive father growing up. So his anger is actually bottled within himself and would actually come out through the Hulk. In other words, when his Hulk side comes out, that's kind of like him projecting his abusive father. But the TV show's not gonna really get into that, so I only brought that up as a psychology of the Incredible Hulk. But let's talk about this TV movie, Trial of the Incredible Hulk. The reason why it was made is because in 1989, they wanted to create another attempt at a backdoor pilot for another superhero, in this case being Daredevil. Now this TV movie came out May 7th, 1989. And it was actually directed by Bill Bixby himself. And it was filmed in Vancouver. I don't bother telling people the city that it was filmed in, but you'll see why I brought that up. Let's just kind of jump to it, shall we? Let's just enjoy some of that angry man hitchhiking stuff. Some angry man doing grunt work. Ooh, you're gonna get it. He's gonna report you to HR. Let's go! And this is where our hero takes off because he doesn't want to turn into the Hulk for someone else. Here I go again on my own. I'm singing this song because I don't want to get sued or copyright. Thank you, YouTube. So, to prevent him from getting angry and becoming the Hulk, he goes to the big city. Didn't think that through, did you? And you know this is New York City because it's lake and it's mountains. Wait, what? I did say it was filmed in Vancouver. Okay, no, no, that is not Matt Murdock. The Matt Murdock we know sleeps in a water tomb or a hydro tomb, whatever those things are called. I saw the movie and tonight Daredevil will be played by Rex Smith, long before Ben Affleck and Charlie Cox. But we'll get back to Matt Murdock in a moment. First, we have to watch David Banner find a brand new room. How long you want it for? By the week. Stay a couple of months, I'll paint the place. Save your paint. Be nice, the slumlord is offering to paint the room. <sighs> Used to get the sun all morning. From my roof, I could see the mountains. Now all I got in my face is some rich man's tinker toy. Remember tinker toys? You know, David Banner, uh, maybe you don't have to travel so much if you just figure out that rednecks pick a fight with you because of your attitude. Rich man's tinker toy. Remember Tinker Toys? David Banner says, fuck your Tinker Toys. Good morning. Oh, see, it's Murdoch and Klein instead of Murdoch and Nelson because in a comic box, Matt Murdoch is an attorney and his partner is Foggy Nelson. But they change things here because they have to be politically correct. Instead of Foggy Nelson, we get Krista Klein, played by Nancy Everhard. And I'm assuming this secretary guy is Karen Page. Page is the secretary, but also the love interest of Matt Murdock sometimes. So according to this movie's mythology, I'm taking it that he's gonna be the love interest. Just to feel the sun. Feel how warm the glass is. 
All right, well, listen, Krista, don't use up all your tender moments with Daredevil. You still have to meet up with a Punisher later. Oh my god, that music indicates those two guys are up to something bad. Or about to start an awesome 80s music video. Yes, that's real good, everyone. Put on your robbery masks right now, now that you're already in the store. Well coordinated. Empty drawers A through F. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but this guy, he's the bad guy. And he is Wilson Fisk, played by John Reese davies a man who really does not need to be in this film. It's I, I really do imagine this film is beneath him. He didn't know Kingpin, yes, spoiler, Wilson Fisk is the Kingpin. John Reese davies was actually prepared to shave to be the Kingpin, but producers were just like, look, we don't care about the the source material, why should you? 40 seconds to go, start diversion. And quite frankly, I don't like this Kingpin being hands-on. This is how Kingpin always ruins himself. Even my favorite Kingpin so far, Vincent D'Onofrio, he got himself in trouble by being hands-on. Kingpin, you're like a leader of an empire. Why are you giving your men instructions on robbing a jewelry store? You're a drug Kingpin. You have bigger, more important things to worry about. Okay, so the robbers put the jewelry in a homeless woman's possession. This man just grabbed the jewelry from her. This is like the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie where all those punk ass kids in the Foot Clan went through a lot of hand exchanges just to steal someone's wallet. That's beautiful too. Okay, great. One of the robbers is getting a little bit silly now. Right off the bat, I want to tell you I'm single. Well, sorry, lady. He struck out with the old man. I guess it's your turn. What's your name, hey? He's just going to reenact the scene with the drunken Wall Street guys from Joker. I'm going to take this woman <sighs> as my wife. Well, okay, for a creepy subway pervert, at least he's very committed. Leave her alone. Oh, this is where David Banner transforms into the Incredible Hulk. And when I say transform, I mean Bill Bixby walks behind the camera while Lou Ferrigno walks in front of the camera. Sorry, but there will be no CGI whoring on this set. Oh, and Lou Ferrigno didn't grow out his beard just like Bill Bixby. Oh, that's gonna be so awkward for everyone on set. You guys better run because I've seen Lou Ferrigno's strength. He'll turn you into a consolation. Aw, oh, man. The Hulk is causing so much damage, and now the bell is going off, meaning it's time for school. And the cops found David Banner. I'm not sure how the stress of being arrested hasn't turned him back into the Incredible Hulk, but he's under arrest. And thanks for fading to black. Now we know it's time for a commercial. They flex. They bend. The fit's incredible, and so is the price. Just $15.99. Incredible. This week, only at Sears. Yes. Oh, Matt Murdock, between Spider-Man and Punisher and the Incredible Hulk, you gotta stop meeting your friends this way. David Belson? Yes. Wait. So now, while on the run, he changed his name again. So we can't even call him Bruce Banner because producers thought Bruce was a gay name back then, let alone keeping in mind that Batman came out this same year. But he changed his name from David Banner to David 
Belson. And he did that in the last movie too. He changed his name but still kept it David but all of it changed to a different last name beginning with a B. Yeah, that'll keep everyone off your trail. The two men you described in the subway car work for a man named Wilson Fisk. I can't prove it yet. Well, if you can't prove it, then you probably should shut your mouth because as a lawyer, you should know that's kind of slander. A woman's in the hospital with concussion. Serious charges. I mean, it may not be his fault directly, but it's, it is still his fault. Maybe I belong in a cage. Do you mind if I take your photograph? Uh, Matt Murdock and David Banner are reenacting the Hello, Is It Me You're Looking For music video. Yes, of course, it's become a crime for a woman to say no. You see this bandage? That's what I get. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure it's a fine bandage. May I say? So, yes, I know people like to talk a lot of smack about She-Hulk, especially that whole entire speech about always being angry when she gets catcalled and guys look at her the wrong way and people are just like woke propaganda because as we know, when someone says a show or comic is being woke, well, let's face it, that's code for anything outside of being a straight white man. So yes, even in 1989, we were still hearing these speeches and being taught lessons that women get approached in such dangerous manner. But <laughs> let me just uh, get off my high horse for a moment and we'll continue with this review. But that's a little homework for you, sir or ma'am. I want you to sit there and think about yourselves. Damn it, I just mansplained. I've had no visitors, except my parents. No one else? Only my parents, Mr. Murdoch. This nurse is listening in too close. I wonder why, hmm? Please go. I've left my card, Miss Mendez. Sir, this is a Baskin Robbins punch card. I'm lawyer Murdoch. I think she's a definite risk. She's fist. It's kind of weird that some underling has that easy of access to Kingpin's right-hand man. And yes, this man is supposedly the Wesley type of character, even though that's not what they call him, but he's the Wesley type of character. And have the Mendez woman killed. Yeah, kill her with that music stinger. Meanwhile, that night in Lear Street, New York City. See, this is what happens when you accept the insurance from your job. Sometimes they forget to pay the monthly bill, the insurance lapse, and then that means the nurse has to kill you. get you with his pitchfork. <laughs> okay, uh, I've seen Daredevil fight ninjas, I've seen Daredevil fight street thugs, and I've seen Daredevil fight overpowered beings. But here Daredevil meets his match, the night nurse. <laughs> He's okay, and the the evil, powerful nurse has died because they work with electronic switchboards that electrocute people very easily just by touch. She tried to kill me, and he helped me. Well, don't give all the credit to the curtain. Well, I suppose this is the moment where I have to say that's not their devil's outfit. So let me get into his backstory. The first issue of Daredevil for Marvel Comics was in April of 1964, created by Stanley and Bill Everett. You see, the story is that Daredevil is the son of battling Jack Murdock, a professional boxer. Young Matt Murdock tries to save a blind man from an oncoming truck, but the thing is the truck was also carrying some radioactive waste, which would make Matt Murdock blind. Now, he initially had the yellow and red costume because the yellow and red came from Jack Murdoch's boxing robe. Jack Murdoch was actually working for a gangster named 
the fixer. Yeah, so we wouldn't really get the daredevil that we know today until years later, where characters were more developed under Frank Miller. According to Frank Miller, battling Jack Murdoch was a drunken, abusive dad to Matt Murdoch. In comics, if your parents aren't dead, they're abusers. And if you're Frank Miller, you have daddy issues and women issues and any kind of minority issues as well. But underneath Frank Miller, Daredevil became an anti-hero. Frank Miller introduced other elements like the hand. He also introduced Elektra. But more importantly though, the story of Daredevil has changed because instead of the fixer being responsible for Matt Murdock's father's death, it was actually the Kingpin. Yes, Frank Miller actually took Spider-Man's enemy and made Kingpin Daredevil's antagonist. So really the black outfit that you see after this movie came out, the comics tried giving Daredevil a black outfit as well. So that's a little background of Daredevil. I'll get into a little tiny bit more as we continue because like I said, this film kind of does whatever it wants with these characters. We can turn this setback to our advantage. I want the Mendez woman taken alive. Daredevil will come after her and then we will have him. See, that's why I really like his casting as Kingpin, because Kingpin is a bit poetic. So yes, why not have the most Shakespearean type of actor play Kingpin? Oh, sorry, in this movie, just Wilson Fisk. But still, he's the Kingpin. Then when the other heads of organized crime gather here, I will show them the death of my enemy. They will join their networks with mine. Is this a perfect plan? I like this Kingpin. Yes, well, no. Good man. What is missing? He cooperates with his right-hand man, almost like a teacher. There was one other witness who saw our two men on the subway car. Yes, I want the Mendes woman taken alive. I want David Belson dead. I know my next cosplay. Oh no, Wormy is going to kill Hulk. Well, he had a good run. Belson! Maybe next murder. Who are you? The name's Tendelli. I know there's more to this than you or that woman is telling me. I want answers. Oh, wow. You know, this guy dresses the part. Why couldn't you just get a General Thunderbolt Ross into this movie? No, nah, he's just the local police chief. Everything was in my statement. But once again, David Banner wants to be difficult for everyone. I had to say what they told me, and they still tried to kill me. Can you come here? <laughs> Not with that attitude. Where is she? Oh no, now she's gone. Anyways, let's cut to the terrifying Fisk Tower. Terrifying, sunny Fisk Tower. And I have the right to say no to some punk on a subway, don't I? You see, I have my own plans and my own dreams. Maybe they're not as big as yours. They're important to me. You go, girl. I have just borrowed you from your life. When I've done, I will put you back. She would probably have made a wonderful teacher one day. So sad. Yeah, you said you were gonna bring her back when you were done baiting her for Daredevil. If you can't trust a fat guy who watches too much TV, who can you trust? I can't stand trial. You don't understand. I understand a woman's been kidnapped. You know, I kind of alluded this in the Return of the Incredible Hulk movie after dealing with Thor, but you've been the Hulk for like 10 years. People are aware of the Hulk. Just, just grow up. I'm telling you that it's dangerous. I'm telling you that it's impossible. And I'm telling you, you have no choice. Okay, I need you all to knock it off. There's too much sexual tension right now. You have no choice, Mr. Belson, if that is your name. Answer the question. You must answer. Oh, okay, so this is the in question trial of the Incredible Hulk. This scene. <laughs> Oh my god, it's Jim Lee! A juror just decided to throw a chair at him. <laughs> but seriously, I don't think there would have been this much trouble had David picked his cousin Jennifer Walters to be his attorney. Single female lawyer fighting for her client. 
Wearing sexy mini skirts and being self-reliant. Or maybe there would be. Single female lawyer having lots of sex. <laughs> See, you know the Hulk is strong because he can break a blind man's cane. <laughs> oh, it was a dream sequence. <laughs> a dream sequence that was enough to awaken the Hulk. Which, him being in prison probably should have awakened the Hulk long ago, but... The Incredible Hulk shows up when the script says so. This green maniac and Belson must be working together somehow. They are two different people. Sir, I don't know the address. I, uh, it was a rundown building in the shadow of that top. Okay, I give credit where credit is due, and this is pretty clever. Matt Murdock is getting his secretary to actually do some uh, geometry, or uh, it's geometry, right? To figure out where Fisk's tower is and where David Banner's apartment is. Well, room is. That's very clever, Daredevil. You used math, the tool of the devil. Check. Okay, so the thing about this Daredevil costume, first of all, where are the horns? And second, bad guys are going to catch on to the fact that you're blind if you don't try to at least cut some eye holes. Tell me about new people in the neighborhood. A man rented a room last Wednesday. Forget about that right now. The man he's talking to in the alley is actually a Marvel character. His name is Turk Barrett. In the comics, he's an African-American. He shows up in all the Netflix shows, but he's supposed to be the comic relief. He's kind of like the informant. Think of him as Marvel's own Huggy Bear. Kids, Huggy Bear is a character from Starsky and Hutch. Read your history books. I hope you're happy, you anti-woke people, because a black man's job is taken by a white guy, so Merry Christmas to you. It's about time you shaved, you slob. Oh, we're gonna get his backstory. Let's see how they butcher this. The boxer, it's my father. So basically, unlike the comic books where Matt Murdock swore that he would fight for the little guy and trained with Stick, basically in this film, he was inspired by an angry police chief and he just kind of trained himself. Tindelli, what's going on? Oh, I've been calling him chief. He's captain. Sorry for my wrong ranking. Maybe somebody who could work alone could do some damage. Maybe somebody could get behind the lines, hit and run, keep himself a secret. Maybe some guy who dares to be a devil? Some kind of a, I don't know, crazy daredevil, if you will. Oh my god, I was just joking. When I saw the speeding truck, there was an old man standing in the way, ran and pushed him out of the way. One of the steel drums broke loose when it swerved and hit the street in front. It was a wave of green liquid. Mmm, delicious ecto-cooler. Said he overheard a conversation that they're holding the Mendez woman in the web. That's all he heard, the web. Some people call it the web. The old Cosgrove Studios. Thank you for reminding me. I could be watching Spider-Man No Way Home. I almost turned away from her once. So I'll, I'll do what I can before I leave for her. And for you. Ah, so this is where Daredevil goes to save the lady. But it's a trap. Let the woman go. <laughs> this will be the greatest performance of your life. Ow. And with the vibrations and the sounds, Daredevil is getting his ass kicked. But don't worry, because the Incredible Hulk is on his way. Hulk. Why is it every time the Hulk attacks, he moves slow? Ah! 
Hulk is on a killing spree today. We just have to assume they're dead, right? I mean, they had no problem killing off the nurse. I guess these henchmen can die too. So he learns why David's been reluctant to help out, followed by this very sensual scene. Okay, here we get the scene where now Daredevil is feeling down because he got defeated. And now it's up to David Banner to talk him into doing his job. Pep talks for each other. You look lovely. Look at me, please. And I gotta say, she's giving off a real seductive, there is no Dana, only Zool vibe. I'm nervous, but I try to smile without looking foolish. Right now, it's not the time, Edgar. You people are killers. You gotta wait a little bit longer for the Stockholm Syndrome to kick in. Meanwhile, Fisk is inviting all the criminal heads to his building. He wants to show them that they did indeed defeat Daredevil. That way they can trust in him to give him the power to rule over them. Perhaps to rule like a king. Pin. What do you hope to do? Discredit him somehow. Well, first you're gonna have to get in that building. That part's easy. That's what I always like about the Incredible Hulk, whether it's the TV show or the TV movies. Lots and lots of talking. I could do it with my eyes closed. Lots of it. Unfortunately, we cannot drink because there is only ice in our glasses. But it is a very special kind of ice. Give him real drinks. How rude. You're a rude host. Hurry, we have to make our move now. Will you? <laughs> You've been bad, Edgar. Oh, and here's the return of the sexual predator. <laughs> okay, you know, this hallway fighting scene isn't as fun as the Netflix Daredevil hallway fighting scene. <laughs> you sad little fat <laughs> Ray! David Banner and Edgar defeated the sexual predator henchman thug. I can't wait till the Incredible Hulk shows up again. Oh, but Edgar, he'll kill you now. He'll forgive me. I'm the only one he does forgive. No, no way, I'll get you out of here. I really can't wait for the Incredible Hulk. Daredevil officially dead. <laughs> Look, it's YouTube internet reviewing. I think the jokes can be a bit predictable. So what happens when a character crashes through the wall? Yep, Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah. Your power is finished in this city, Fisk! Okay, so now that Daredevil has caught up to Wilson Fisk, this is gonna get exciting because in all the live action iterations of Daredevil, even the Spider-Man cartoon, Daredevil and Kingpin had the most legendary fights. I can't wait to see how this plays out. I also can't wait for the Incredible Hulk to show up too. Oh my gosh, Wilson Fisk has a hovercraft and Edgar is with him. So I guess he forgave Edgar for releasing the captured woman. He's not exactly rushing to get away from you. You can still catch him. He's gradually getting away, Chief. Daredevil! He's gonna get you with his pitchfork. Fisk will be back. He'll try. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. No, I'm going to start using my skills as a scientist and a doctor. Parts of me that I've been neglecting lately. Yeah, you know what else you've been neglecting? All that time giving a lecture to Matt Murdock to man up and be a daredevil. Where the hell were you as the Incredible Hulk? The final climax of this movie and the Incredible Hulk doesn't show up. In fact, the Incredible Hulk never faces Kingpin. And in fact, the only time we actually see a trial is in a dream. F this movie. Good luck. You take my secret with you. And I leave mine with you. I have a brother in the world now. Um, wow. Okay, uh, I think Thor would take exception to that. And David Banner once again goes off on another adventure where he is rude to everyone he interacts with, gives lectures to other people. 
avoids being a hero and does not help out in the final battle. That was the trial of the Incredible Hulk. This is where I would kind of give like a bit of a breakdown of what happened afterwards, but there's not much that happened afterwards. Like I said, it was supposed to function as a backdoor pilot for a Daredevil series, just like the previous movie was supposed to be a backdoor pilot for a Thor series, but neither of them materialized. After this, there was one more TV movie called The Death of the Incredible Hulk. I don't know if I'll ever review that one. I might surprise myself, but honestly, I'm not sure because that one's not a crossover. It's just The Death of the Incredible Hulk. Spoiler. Which would have followed up with another movie of the resurrection of the Incredible Hulk or something like that. Sadly, after the death of the Incredible Hulk, Bill Bixby passed away. But Lou Frigno, well, he still continues. He still does a lot of Hulk cameos. He even was the voice of the Incredible Hulk in the live action movies up until Avengers Age of Ultron. I think that's all I'll leave off with. I'm Anthonix Matt. Maximus. Thank you for watching Anthonix Maximus reviews and perhaps become one of the Anthonix Maxiteers. Or in today's case, a Hulkamaniac.